political analysis, let's bring in Jean-Marie Thiodat. He's a lecturer at the Pantheon Sorbonne University. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. Thank you for It seems me. like it's an assassination that's really gotten not just Haiti itself, but the entire international community really up in arms. Shocking, was it? It is really shocking because uh, Haiti has been in a turmoil for more than two years now, but uh, nobody never accept, accepted to go that far. So it's a symbol of the state that has been uh, uh, um, assassinated. So that make, makes it even harder for us to understand. Absolutely. You said it's a symbol of the state, which happens to be in turmoil. We'll go into detail uh, concerning that later. But who would you say is at the helm of the country at this very moment? The thing is that uh, this assassination happens at a time that uh, we're in the middle of a, we're in the transition between the former prime minister that has been uh, um, fired by the president and the new prime minister who is normally in charge of it. But uh, he didn't have enough time to step in the power. So we're in the between. And in the between, there is a lot, a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty. So there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot to be answered for, and that's not the only sticking point. It appears that, and correct me if I'm wrong, I was reading about this earlier, that uh, the parliament and only the parliament has the power to really declare a state of siege or state of emergency. But Haiti, at this particular moment, doesn't actually have a functional parliament. So the, have they done that illegally, essentially? There is no parliament functional. And uh, the president, uh, I mean, even though we have to express, I have to express my sympathy towards the Haitian people and toward his family because he used to be my neighbor when I was dean in Limonat. So, but by the way, he had uh, uh, um, a very authoritarian uh, uh, path before him and now behind him. So there was a lot of uh, question about the way he was behaving toward the position. So there is, uh, uh, it's, it's really a pity that uh, uh, he, in whom we had put so much... Uh, faith. So much faith, you know. And uh, it was uh, really uh, a figure from the very bottom of the society, of the rural uh, Haiti, that uh, came to the power, and we thought that was, uh, it was a new time for us to really change the symbol, to change uh, the way that we were uh, building this nation, and all this dream just collapsed with him. The dreams did shatter. Uh, Professor, you mentioned that you were living very close to now the slain president. What was he like, and what was your own uh, situation and conditions like while, while you were still in Haiti? Because you, unlike many others, had the opportunity to escape and come to France. Yeah, but you know, I decided, decided to go back to Haiti right after the quake in 2010 in order to participate and to get involved in the rebuilding of the higher education system. And that's where I met uh, Jovenel Moïse because he was in charge of the big uh, estate of, uh, of Banana next to my, to my campus. And so we used to exchange our tools and I told him that uh, I would be very pleased to involve my old students in the managing. He had personal dealings with the slain president. Absolutely. We were friends. We used to call each other neighbor. And when one day he stepped in my desk and told me that he was about to, to, to be candidate for president, I told him, please don't. Because what we're doing, both of us together, is much more important for the future. And of you're Haiti. talking about the work that he was doing in the agricultural field, right? Exactly, the agricultural field. Because I thought that uh, he was a, a very good uh, um, manager, uh, a, a businessman. And he was very young, full of uh, energy. And I told him, let's, let's bring it together with the university and we can do something better for Haiti. But he told me that... Uh, his goals, uh, if he wanted to reach them, he had to, through the, to go through the power. So I said, OK, you, you, you know what you, you, you really deserve and want to do. But uh, right after this, I mean, the, the power just changed, it, changed him. And I never got the chance to meet him anymore. And that is a big question. Your relationship was severed with the slain president. 
I want to talk about very briefly, if you can, about Haiti today. Why is it, even prior to this assassination, why has it been in such a state of chaos? This is an organized chaos. Chaos doesn't happen just like this, you know. When you look at, uh, for instance, uh, the way that the gangs are blocking the, the, the capital area in Port-au-Prince, for more than two weeks now, we've not been able to go from north to south. That means uh, there is a, 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 hide, a hidden hand behind this. To say it clearly, Haiti is kind of a black hole where the gangs, where the narco-traffickers, where the all kind of corruptors have found a, a, a house to, 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 to host the, 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 the facts without any fear of justice any fear of a real country to be against them. On that note, Jean-Marie Theodat, I have to end the interview. Thank you so much for sharing not just your story with us, but shedding light on what's happening in Haiti. I wish your family and friends a security back in the country. Thank you so much.